Hi, I'm Terry Abler. You may recognize me from the video you watched when you were considering the purchase of your new boat. And by the way, congratulations on choosing Carver. Your boat represents a sizable investment, and you are the captain. And as the captain, you are solely responsible for the safety and well-being of your passengers and crew, as well as the responsible operation of your vessel. Therefore, Carver has developed this captain's briefing to provide you with an overview of some key onboard systems and how they function. However, this is not a substitute for reading and understanding your owner's guide. We also recommend reading other boating-related literature, such as Chapman Piloting. Keep these on board and frequently refer to them when questions arise. We also advise that you complete a U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary-sponsored safe boating course. So remember, review this program. Read your manual. Read Chapman. Complete a safe boating course and become a student of the sea. Before you take delivery of your new vessel, we advised you to conduct a sea trial with an appropriate representative from your Carver dealership. Be sure all of your operational and systems questions are answered. The first 25 hours of operation are generally considered to be a shakedown period. Remember, your new vessel is comprised of many varied systems, and despite an elaborate pre-delivery inspection, just like with a new home, you may find that adjustments are necessary and more questions will arise. Carry a pencil and paper so you can record any issues that come to mind during this period. Make a list and go over it with the dealer at your 25 hour check. This is the most effective way for you and your dealer to get your boat sea ready. Before you go out to sea, we recommend a pre-trip inspection of the boat. Having problems at sea is inconvenient to say the least. So think of this inspection as if you were the pilot of an airplane. Develop a systematic procedure that you follow. Your pre-trip inspection should begin with a full visual inspection of the boat, both exterior and interior. Is it floating right? Verify the location and condition of the fire extinguishers, flares, and the throwable flotation device. Inform all passengers of the location of this safety equipment. Check your engine and transmission fluid levels, engine coolant and fuel levels, and fuel filters. See the owner's guide for more details. Inspect all through-hull fittings and valves for water tightness. Look underneath the engines to make sure there are no fluids or loose parts in the bilge area of the boat. Check your sea strainers and engine feed hoses. If a sea strainer needs cleaning, be sure to turn off your sea cock so that you don't flood the boat with water. Then remove the cap, remove the sea strainer, clean and replace. Be sure to reopen the sea cock. While in the engine room, you'll also want to check your shaft logs for any fluid drip and make sure there is no salt spray or any evidence of leaks. If there are, call an authorized service center immediately. Don't forget to disconnect and stow all shore power cables in their proper compartments. If the boat has a cable master, make sure the cable is fully retracted. Before you get underway, file a float plan with a family member or your home port marina. Let them know where you're going to be and how you can be reached in the event of an emergency. Your vessel should be equipped with a VHF radio which can also supply you with updated weather reports. Closely monitoring weather conditions is a good idea while you're at sea. It's also good practice to have your passengers outfitted with a personal flotation device, especially children or elderly that might have a problem with the water. U.S. Coast Guard regulations state that a U.S. Coast Guard approved PFD is required for each passenger on board and that one throwable PFD is easily accessible. It's also a smart idea to connect a safety line to the throwable PFD. Topping off the fuel tanks is recommended before an extended voyage. There are few service stations out at sea. We'll instruct you on proper fueling procedures later in this program. When loading items onto the boat, 
Have a person hand them to you while you're on board. Stow the items in a secure place and distribute the weight evenly. Overloading passengers or gear to one side can adversely affect your vessel's performance, ride, and stability. Carver equips all models with trim tabs, which can assist you in maintaining a level vessel. But these function only when the vessel is on plane. Make no mistake about it, load balance and the proper use of trim tabs can maximize the control of your vessel, especially in high winds or rough seas. Please refer to your owner's guide or Chapman piloting for the proper use of trim tabs. And one last thing about trim tabs, always remember to have them in the up position before backing. Each carver is equipped with starboard and port engines. With gasoline powered models, make sure you run your blowers, which are located on the helm before startup for at least four minutes. And whether your vessel is powered by gas or diesel engines, Always inspect your engine compartment for fuel leaks and sniff for fumes. If fumes are present, do not start the engines. Determine the cause and get assistance if necessary. To start the engines, position both the port and starboard engine controls in neutral. Depending on your model, it will be equipped with either dual or single lever controls for each engine. Refer to your owner's guide for specific detailed operation. Turn the key on clockwise one quarter turn. On this particular model, the blowers are automatically activated with the starboard ignition. Then turn the key clockwise for engine ignition. Watch your tachometer, which will help indicate engine ignition. And repeat this instruction for port engine startup. Never start both engines at the same time. The throttle controls of each engine along with the wheel and the trim tabs, accomplish the turning, leveling, and powering of the boat. In some Carver models, bow thrusters are available to assist in low speed maneuvering. Bow thrusters are usually identified with larger Carver models and operate at a very slow or no forward momentum, normally when docking or disembarking. The most important factor of maneuvering is knowing the pivot point of your boat. On most boats, the pivot point is near the helm. You should find this point while underway, at idle, in open water. Here's how. When you place one engine forward and one in reverse, at what point on the center line does the boat turn? Think of the boat as a clock, with the pivot point located where the clock hands attach in the center. Know your boat's pivot point in maneuvering situations. The basic functionality of the helm is similar in all models. Let's take a look at a typical helm layout. Each helm is equipped with a complete set of gauges, which allow you to monitor the operation and condition of the propulsion system. There's also an audible alarm system that will automatically sound if the vessel should ever lose oil pressure or overheat. If this warning system activates, Shut the engines down immediately until the cause of the alarm is remedied. Familiarize yourself with all the helm gauges and their function and monitor them often. Your owner's guide has more information. On this model, there's a set of single lever engine controls on the starboard side of the steering wheel. The starboard lever controls the starboard engine and the port lever controls the port engine. Each shifter lever performs four basic functions. A neutral or idle for startup, forward, reverse, and throttle for engine speed. Please see the owner's guide for greater detail. Always maneuver your vessel carefully and slowly away from the dock. Patience is the hallmark of a quality captain. Never try to fend off a vessel of this size from the dock or pilings. The vessel was designed to absorb an impact much better than the human body. Your safety equipment should include suitable fenders to help protect the hull from an impact with the dock. These should be properly stowed away by your crew when the vessel is free and clear. When you arrive at your home port, approach slowly and with caution. 
Again, be patient. Watch the winds and the current of the water. They will affect the vessel's maneuverability. Always use fenders to protect the hull from an impact with the dock. And it's good practice to use them whenever and wherever possible. Let's take a look at the electrical system. All Carver models are equipped with both an AC 110 volt and a DC 12 volt electrical system, each with a separate control center, holding its own set of breakers. The AC panel functioning when utilizing shore power or the genset and the DC panel functioning when using battery power. Some larger Carver models can also be equipped with an inverter to convert onboard 12 volt battery power to AC electricity. The inverter is a limited power supply system. If the engines or generator are not running, it will draw down on your battery power. Make sure you know which equipment operates on an inverter and refer to your captain's kit for further instructions. Boats that are equipped with an inverter have an inverter bypass switch, usually located in close proximity to the inverter. On inverter-equipped models, Carver has designed a fail-safe low battery recognition system into the vessel, which automatically shuts this system down when the onboard batteries discharge below 10.5 volts. The inverters also have a charging system which automatically replenishes house battery systems with either a trickle charge or a boost charge, depending on battery status, when 110 volts is available. See the owner's guide for details on operation. Let's quickly review the AC and DC control center configuration. The AC panel houses the breakers that control electrical current flow when using shore power or the generator. The DC panel houses the breakers that control electricity when using the onboard battery systems and, if so equipped, inverter breakers. For AC hookup, after the vessel is secured to the dock, you need to attach your shore power lines to the dock receptacle. On most Carver models, there are two shore power lines, Shore 1 and Shore 2, with Shore 2 typically being devoted to the air conditioning system. Please refer to your owner's guide for details on your specific configuration. You'll also find the cable TV and phone connections in the vicinity of the shore power lines on the transom of the vessel. Shore power plugs can also be located on the starboard foredeck. Refer to your owner's guide for more information. Follow this procedure when connecting to shore power. To connect, Make sure all dock and boat breakers are in the off position. Always plug your shore power line into the dock receptacle first, then to the boat. Just plug in and twist clockwise. It will lock into place. Secure safety nuts if available. Turn the shore power breaker at the dock receptacle on. Switch on the main breakers on your vessel typically located in the same position of the shore power cable as it enters the yacht. Next, go to the AC control panel on board the vessel and select either forward or aft shore power if applicable. Turn the appropriate breaker group on. A green light will illuminate indicating shore power to the panel. If you plug the shore power line into a hot dock receptacle and do not get power to the panel, check the main breakers. If the mains are not in the on position, you will not get power to the vessel. If you use the generator to supply AC electricity while in transit, you can disconnect the generator from the AC panel by turning the breaker switch in the control center to off. Never turn the generator off with a load on it. That could cause serious electrical damage to the systems on the vessel. To start or stop the generator, go to the DC control panel on the vessel. Locate the generator start-stop switch and hold either up or down, depending on whether you want to start or stop the generator. The selector switch on your AC panel allows you to change from generator supplied power to shore supplied power. You'll see that all appliances, electrical devices, and electrical components on board the vessel have their own breaker. Familiarize yourself with the AC and DC control panels 
and consult with your owner's guide if any questions come up concerning either power system. Now let's take a look at the DC or 12 volt side. The breakers are configured the same as on the AC panel, but are located on the DC side of the panel. The DC panel controls various 12 volt appliances with the power being supplied by onboard battery groups. The battery systems, along with their respective charging units on most Carver models, have been divided into three serviceable groups or banks. Battery banks are simply a series of batteries connected together, and on most models, each engine has its own battery and charger, the house system has its own battery and charger, and the generator has its own battery and charger. Engine and generator batteries can also be charged directly from the engine mounted alternator while the engine is running. For Carver models that do not have a designated house battery, we offer a selector switch so the captain can choose which battery bank is to be used and which battery banks can be charging or in reserve. In most cases, on larger models, a battery bank for the bow thrusters will be isolated with its own charging unit as well. There's a safety breaker panel normally located in the engine room on the starboard or aft bulkhead. It manages the power supply of various safety equipment, including the battery chargers. The breakers on the safety panel should remain on at all times. This ensures that power is always supplied to the auto bilge pumps, auto sumps, stereo memory, and the charging units. If the charger breakers are left in the on position, as advised, the battery systems in need of charging will automatically charge. See section two of your owner's guide for more detailed information. Depending on the Carver model, there may be another important bridge breaker panel located near the helm. This circuit breaker is always on and protects optional navigational systems. If the circuit breaker should ever trip, simply push the button to reset. Always keep batteries fully charged because they'll last longer. Make sure battery water levels are full at all times. Low water levels can cause battery failure. Keep terminals and connections clean and secure. And when leaving the boat for an extended period of time, turn off all unnecessary accessory breakers. Always remove the batteries during extended periods of storage. The internal systems on your new Carver are comprehensive. So let's begin with the operation of the air conditioning system. The air conditioning system needs AC power to function. The system also requires a supply of ambient water. Before you power up, make sure the seacock is open. Remove and clean the seawater strainer if needed. Make sure the auto sump pump breaker is on at the safety panel. Turn on the AC water pump circuit breaker at the AC control center. And switch the desired house breakers on. Verify that water is being pumped through your exterior discharge through hull fittings. To set the desired temperature for the air conditioner, use the appropriate control panel that monitors each zone. The control panel allows you to turn the air on and off, set climate and moisture conditions, select a cool only or heat only mode, select a fan speed, or choose the auto feature which automatically adjusts the system to changing conditions in climate day to night. Also note that since this system functions like a heat pump, you may lose efficiency on the heat side anywhere below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The vessel's fresh water system is designed to function on demand, just like your home. The capacity of the water tank varies depending on the model. To fill the fresh water tanks, remove the deck fitting plate labeled water and fill. Be sure to use clean fresh water only. You'll need to pressurize and prime the water system, making sure all the air in the lines is purged from the pipes. Then top off the water tank. By the way, a fresh water washdown uses water from the tank and will reduce the amount of fresh water in the tank. See section four of your owner's guide for more information. All Carver yachts come equipped with a standard shore water hookup, so you can get water from a shore water source while you're in port. A pressure reduction valve protects onboard plumbing from excessive city water pressure. Please note that this will not fill your onboard storage tanks. 
Your new vessel contains a series of bilge pumps, with each having the capability to remove about 1,500 gallons of water per hour. The pumps operate in an auto mode, triggered by float switches, as long as the auto bilge pump breakers on the safety breaker panel are on. Again, it's good practice to always leave the breakers at the safety panel on. The bilge pumps can also be operated manually by selecting the appropriate bilge pump switch located at the helm and the DC panel. The sanitation system of the vessel contains one or more toilets, one or more waste tanks, and possibly an optional overboard waste discharge system. Carver, however, recommends that you use the onboard holding tanks whenever possible. The heads are equipped with either electric or vacuum flush toilets. Electric toilets use either onboard water or seawater to flush, while the vacuum flush uses only onboard water. By depressing the foot pedal or switch, both systems will flush. Please refer to your owner's guide for proper operation and care. When using the waste holding tank system, you'll need to visually inspect the tank itself or the optional monitor. If the indicator shows full or near full, you'll have to pump out the tank. To pump out dockside, locate the appropriate waste fitting in the deck. Remove the cap and attach the dockside suction hose to the fitting. Make sure it's secure. Activate the pump out vacuum and wait for all the waste to be pumped into the dockside holding station. Flush the tank by pouring a few gallons of fresh water through the waste deck fitting. Then reattach the vacuum hose and remove any remaining water and waste. Secure the waste deck plate and repeat the same procedure on any additional tanks. If your vessel is equipped with an overboard waste discharge system, you can empty your holding tanks while at sea. The system, however, is heavily restricted and can only be used in specified U.S. coastal waters and abroad. To discharge, open the overboard discharge seacock and the Y valve to set the proper plumbing route. See the owner's guide for location. Make sure you have power to your DC panel. At the DC control center, turn on the waste pump breakers. Another switch will be located in the vicinity of the tanks. Use this to control the overboard discharge pump. Then, flush the system using the same method instructed for dockside discharge. Be sure to secure all valves when finished. Repeat the same steps for additional holding tanks. There are two types of engines used on Carver vessels, gasoline or diesel. It's very important to know which type engine your vessel is equipped with to determine proper fuel selection. On most models, each engine has its own separate fuel tank. Refer to the OEM information for details and fuel tank plumbing configuration. Before you begin to fuel the vessel, make sure it's secure to the fuel dock. Close all port lights, hatches, and doors. Turn off all electrical devices, including the generator, and extinguish all open flames and smoking material. Trace the fuel hose from the nozzle all the way back to the pump to verify proper fuel type. Remove the appropriate deck plate and make sure the nozzle remains in constant contact with the metal portion of the fuel inlet. This will help prevent the possibility of creating a static electricity spark. Begin fueling and listen for sputter in the fuel vents to indicate the tank is full. Replace the deck plate securely and repeat the instruction when filling any remaining fuel tanks. There are several safety systems designed into your new Carver motor yacht. Carver has employed an automatic system for bilge blowers and pumps, a fire suppression system in the engine room, and a series of carbon monoxide detectors positioned throughout the vessel. On some models, a Fireboy engine shutdown system is also employed to work in combination with the fire suppression system. The Fireboy automatically shuts the engines down upon activation of the fire suppression system. The system will only activate in an emergency situation, and you may need to override the Fireboy to restart your engines. The Fireboy fire suppression system is standard on all models but only has auto engine shutdown capability on diesel models. Please refer to your owner's guide for more detailed operation.
Carbon monoxide is a very deadly gas that can accumulate in the living spaces on the vessel and is usually caused by exhaust fumes from an engine or generator seeping into the vessel. The carbon monoxide detectors aboard will produce an audible alarm when carbon monoxide gas is detected or when the voltage that powers the system falls below 10.2 volts. We urge you to read all carbon monoxide related literature in your captain's kit, as well as Chapman piloting. Maintaining your boat is one of the most important things you can do to extending its longevity and seaworthiness. A sound maintenance schedule and log or record is recommended. Consult with your captain's kit for all recommendations. And remember, a good captain never shortcuts on maintenance. The exterior fiberglass surfaces, underwater metal components, caulking and sealants, stainless steel, exterior vinyl upholstery, canvas, carpet, woodwork, countertops, fabrics and fiberglass all require routine maintenance and proper cleaning. Again, please refer to your owner's guide and consult with your dealer for detailed instruction and care. You should exercise the vessel's through-hull ball valves monthly. This practice will help prevent lockup and keep the valve clean of corrosion. Carver strongly recommends checking engine alignment 24 to 48 hours after each launch and realign when necessary. It's also a good practice to check engine transmission levels frequently. A new coat of bottom paint should be applied annually. The hull should be inspected for marine growth on a regular basis and a bottom wash performed when needed. Bottom wash-ups will help prevent unwanted hull surface buildup and you should check with your marina or dealer to determine wash-up frequency for your specific boating region. For proper maintenance procedure on OEM or original equipment manufacturer components, such as engines, pumps, internal systems, batteries, and other optional equipment, please refer to your owner's guide and the OEM information that accompanies it. Also, your Carver Yacht dealer is an excellent source of advice. Before you store away your boat for an extended period of time, like during the winter, there are several steps that must be followed and some of the steps are critical in preventing extensive damage to the vessel and its systems. Carver recommends that you hire a professional when storing the boat for long periods and when recommissioning the boat after winter storage. At the time of purchase, your Carver dealer will prepare your boat for delivery in accordance with the pre-delivery service record document. Be sure that the pre-delivery service record and all OEM warranty cards have been filled out and mailed. You should retain a copy of these records for reference. From the time the boat arrives at the dealership, we begin to track its service history as it's reassembled, fully inspected, and all necessary adjustments are completed. This ensures that the vessel is delivered to you under the highest standard set forth by Carver and begins the warranty period on your new boat. Carver provides an industry-leading 751 limited warranty with any new boat purchase. This includes seven-year coverage for structural components, five-year coverage for osmotic blistering, and one-year comprehensive coverage. Your warranty is like an insurance policy that you purchase along with the boat. Some restrictions and limitations apply. It's also transferable under certain conditions. Carver is responsible for the vessel and components that fall under the 751 limited warranty. Certain OEM components carry their own warranty and are not covered by Carver or the dealer. These component manufacturers make their own warranty decisions and provide their own warranty service. Your selling dealer is responsible for coordinating and completing all your warranty claims and repairs. Also, you, as owner, are responsible for registering all applicable warranty information and operating your boat in accordance with guidelines outlined in your captain's kit. It's up to you to ensure that routine maintenance and inspections are performed and to work with your dealer to coordinate a reasonable time for any repairs. There's more. OEM warranties, 
pass-through warranties, and transferable warranties all have varying degrees of owner responsibility. Please refer to your owner's guide for complete and specific warranty information. Genmar's First Mate program is now standard on all 2004 models and gives you added peace of mind at sea. The Genmar First Mate program ensures your boating days are hassle-free with instant access to live information and assistance 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Remember, your dealership is your best friend when it comes to your warranty or assistance program. They can help you sort out any related questions or claims. Well, that's it for our Captain's Briefing. All of us at Carver hope you spend your time on the water with confidence and security. Remember to use your owner's guide and Chapman piloting as reference material when questions arise concerning your boat's safe operation, maintenance procedures, warranties, or systems. You're the captain, and it's your responsibility to know your ship. At sea, there is no substitute for your own caution, preparedness, and sound judgment. Respect the environment. Be courteous to the other boaters around you. Take care of your passengers, your crew, and your vessel. And have some fun. We'll see you on the water.